Such a beautiful way to start off the day with Kimya Dawson. Kimya Dawson, formerly of the uh, Moldy Peaches, if you remember the band, the Moldy Peaches. She was the uh, one of the singers in the Moldy Peaches here, New York City band, very hot New York City band. Got to see them, got to meet them, got to know these people. They're a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant band. So, Mark's Conti reporting. We'll do some, uh, let's do some deep dive into the top stories today. Top stories today. So, in case you thought that your ass doesn't stink, your shit doesn't stink, check this shit out. Check this video out. Man. <laughs> this, this guy is like, he's, I don't know where he is. I think it's Cambodia, and the fucking bees are up his ass. Look at this shit. I'm trying to Oh shit my fucking ass Oh god damn the bee up my asshole Bee up my asshole Damn it Get the bee up my asshole Hell oh my Get the bees in my asshole <laughs> Crazy right He doesn't seem to be he, I guess he likes it He likes some bees up his ass But what would you do man What would you do Hey, you're just you're hanging out, man. I don't know. I thought it was a funny video, man. Fuck. <laughs> ah, damn. This guy's, guy's got to be up his ass. So let's talk about the news. We're going to talk about, talk about the uh, election fraud, the rigging of the primary. Uh, Senator Kirsten Gillibrand has dropped out. Martial law may be declared in, uh, in um, Hong Kong. And uh, what else? Got a man. Oh, guy tries to a uh, guy uh, death by by uh, cereal, death by heroin and cereal. I'll tell you more about that. I don't want to give away the punchline. And uh, maybe a happy story about some guy swimming across the Pacific. So, so w- let's start with the the election. Um, today is the 29th. Yes, 29th of August. Which means the uh, the criteria, the uh, eligibility to get into the September uh, debate, presidential Democratic primary debate, is officially closed. The deadline is today. Right? It was actually yesterday. So if you didn't make the hundred and thirty thousand uh, individual um, individual donors, or you didn't qualify in four of the fake uh, sanctioned fake. Uh, uh, polls, then you you're not in the you're not going to be on the debate stage. And for lesser candidates, that is a death sentence. Right? For for any other candidate, for for I don't know. I think it's for any any candidate at this point because you have ten thousand ten million excuse me ten million people watching the debates. And if you're an unknown or a lesser known candidate, you have no way of breaking through. Those that's why the primaries are so. That's why the debates are so important. And that's also why they're stacking it with 10 individuals. <clears throat> so you say, oh, well, 10 people are not going to make the, uh, we're going to, there was too many, too many contestants the last time, right? So true. But here's the but. Uh, so here's the, here's the 10 candidates that uh, allegedly qualify. Again, we don't know. It's just, it's ABC doing it. ABC, the, the fake news media, uh, one of them has determined the pending verification releases the information pending verification by the DNC after the uh, qualifying deadline. So here's the contestants. We've got Joe Biden, um, Cory Booker, Pete Buttigieg, 
Julian Castro, Camilla Harris, Amy Klobuchar, Beto O'Rourke, Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, Andrew Yang. So those are the 10. The other 10 are gone. And I know you guys might not like the idea that um, Tulsi Gabbard got, you know, got butchered, but we knew it was coming, right? So Jay, Jay Inslee has, uh, has, uh, resigned, has bowed out. John Hinkelooper has bowed out. Seth uh, Moulton has bowed out. And so has Kirsten Gillibrand right here. Senator Kirsten Gillibrand drops out of 2020 presidential race. Bye-bye. Who cares? Uh, Gillibrand is dropping out of the 2020 race. The 52-year-old Democrat announced her decision in a tweet Wednesday as her campaign, which once looked so, um, so to ride strong the Me Too credentials, was plagued by low polling and fundraising struggles. Ah, right here she is. Isn't she lovely? Isn't she one? Hey, everyone. I wanted you to hear it from me first, that after more than eight incredible months, I'm ending my presidential campaign. I know this isn't the result we wanted. We wanted to win this race. But it's important to know when it's not your time and to know how you can best serve your community and country. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Even her own, um, her own staff was saying she's an arrogant cunt. Uh, maybe not cunt, but she's uh, definitely arrogant. So she's gone. Vice President Joe Biden, Biden, Booker, Buttigieg, Castro, Harris, Klobuchar, O'Rourke, Sanders, Warren, Yang. Uh, again. So it will only be one night, and that date is uh, September. La, 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 September. Sometime in September, September 12th. If necessary, September 13th. Now, if there were 11 qualifiers, they would have it on two nights. And... That would have been better because then you would have got you would have got six and five. Six one night, five the other night, or five one night, six the other night. A six or five, a five to six, right? You would have two nights with less people on the stage. That would have been the better way to go, but that's too much in favor of the candidates, especially if it's Bernie Sanders and, and uh, you know Elizabeth Warren on the stage. They don't want to give they don't want to give the perception that there is a progressive party a progressive wing of their own party. They want to denigrate that and say that those people are not part of the party. They're outsiders. Right, so the way to combat that is to put in all the corporatist Democrats, senators, literally, they're literally corporatist senator Democrats. Amy Klobuchar, you know, uh, Cory Booker, ugh, Castro, Kamala Harris, right? Uh, Yang is, I think, I, I'm, I'm happy to see Yang still hanging in there, right? Hang is, Yang is hanging. <laughs> He's still hanging in there with, uh, you know, 2 or 3% of the vote. So we'll see what happens. Um, you know, again, it's rigged. The whole thing is rigged. The whole thing is rigged. They should, it's not, it's not nice to have, you know, distinguished senators and congresspeople and mayors on the stage fighting like children, like a reality TV show, for Christ's sake. So what's going on in Hong Kong? Hong Kong. Hey, uh, I'm a, oh, we're not allowed to say it. Hey, uh, <laughs> we'll see if the video stays up because I because I said the word. Authorities in Hong Kong are considering whether to impose dac draconian draconian. Excuse me, I know what it means. Draconian martial law powers in a bid to crush pro democracy protests. Oh, man, fucking martial law, right? They had that shit in Taiwan, by the way. They had it in Taiwan for many years where people were not allowed to... They would just come and take you if they wanted to. The, the uh, communist... Actually, the, the opposing communist Chinese did that in Taiwan, and now the, 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 the communist China uh, Chinese are doing it in Hong Kong. Crazy. According to a report in South uh, China Morning Post, executive, Chief Executive Carol Lam... Chang, Carol Lam Chang, is not ruling out involving emergency regulations ordinance for the first time in half a century. The ordinance would grant the government sweeping powers, including authorizing and searching, entering and searching of properties, censoring the media, and imposing, imposing maximum terms of life in prison. <laughs> Lawmaker Akmach 
warned that imposing emergency powers would lead to the total destruction of Hong Kong's capitalist system. <laughs> Damn right it will. While law professor Simon Yang of the University of Hong Kong Hong said the ordinance meant basically a state of martial law. That's crazy shit, man. Fucking, you know, it's like they can't win, right? They, you know, it's the, the people, there's some people that are going to be prone to violence and push back on the police in their own country because they think that that's the only thing that they have left. And they're going to do it and they should be allowed to do it, right? I, I guess, I don't know, whatever, man. But uh, martial law, right? That means, that means nobody out past a certain hour. That means, you know, police stop, search, frisk, take you away. No speaking out of turn. No, I mean, it's just, it's just the, the list goes on and on. They can arrest you for anything or nothing. And that's, uh, I, I would say that's the, pretty much would be the end of Hong Kong as we know it. Or there'll be, a, you know, there's going to be a lot of uh, people not going to, they may not go down. Um, they may not go down gently uh, and fight their asses off. I want to see some video. I didn't even know. This is Greg Reese this. for Infowars.com in Hong Kong. Now, we've seen a lot of this footage already, right? Infowars, I'm sure. They, that's all they're filming is the police. The umbrellas, throughout rocks flying. There is a lot of peaceful protests, but they are getting a little vicious. Shooting rubber bullets. It's crazy. Cracking heads. All right, you're out. So, Hong Kong, we salute you. To Hong Kong people, we salute you. We, we are watching. The world is watching. The world is watching. So, here's another one. Man accused of murdering his wife with heroin spiked cereal. Holy shit. <laughs> Fucking crazy. A Michigan man was, has been charged with murder nearly five years after the death of his wife, who died after eating a bowl of spiked, uh, cereal spiked with heroin. Authorities said Jason Harris, 44, of Davis, was arraigned Tuesday on charges of first degree murder, soliciting of murder and delivering of a controlled substance causing death, causing death after investigators concluded last week that his 36 year old wife didn't die in September 2014 of an accidental overdose, as originally thought. We believe he put the heroin in her cereal and milk the night that she died after getting it from someone, thinking it would be tasteless and odorless, uh, much like he, he has asked his co-workers multiple times. Right? Wow. So, so there is a lot of circumstantial evidence in this. Nobody knows for sure if he did it. But the, comp, the comp, compounding of circumstantial evidence has led the, led the police to lock him up. A coroner charged the woman's cause of death from accidental overdose and homicide last week following a lengthy investigation that started when relatives questioned the findings, saying they never knew the mother uh, of two to use drugs. That's two pieces of circumstantial evidence. The prosecutor said Harris's siblings went to the police in 2014 to report that he had made statements about getting rid of her. Ooh, that's three pieces of circumstantial evidence. Harris's co-workers also told investigators he told them he wanted to avoid divorcing his wife of 11 years and making child support payments. Four pieces of circumstantial evidence. So he asked the colleague to kill Christina for $5,000 after a hitman he had lined up got arrested. That's pretty, that's pretty devastating. If you have the hitman's testimony, that's, that's direct evidence. I, I believe that, would, that could qualify as direct evidence. So they got him. Harris also sought out drugs that were odorless and tasteless. Five pieces of circumstantial evidence. And apparently given his wife reason to suspect something was going on. Quote, she told a friend that if something happens to me, look at Jason. Oh boy. Police also found that Harris bought a ticket for a flight to Rhode Island to meet up with a new woman just nine days after his wife's death. I don't know about that. You know, life goes on. Harris, who is being held without bond, <laughs> that's bad, has pleaded not guilty, according to his attorney. 
Mr. Harris has been completely cooperative throughout his five-year investigation and is eager to have all the facts revealed. A lot of circumstantial evidence, there's no proof, there's no, there's no um, I don't know, bowl, there's no evidence that he put that heroin in the, in the bowl. There's no confession, there's just a lot of circumstantial evidence. Can a judge, can a jury convict someone on, the, on that sort of information? Not if you have a good attorney, I think he, he might be able to skate on that one. He might skate. Did he do it? I don't know. Man is innocent until proven guilty. So, end on a nice story, nice story. Ah, a man becomes first person to paddleboard across the Pacific Ocean. Now, why talk about this? Because I, I have a special place in my heart for people who undertake endurance, uh, endurance athletics. I, I mean, I, I'm a distance runner. I don't go more than three or five miles anymore, but at the time, I did. I could tell you the euphoria, the high, the adrenaline rush, the the freedom, the sense of being one with one's body, the, the, the fluidity of running uh, usually kicks in at, at about the 30 to 45 minute mark while running. And, um, and I understand it's in, it's in swimming, anybody who's doing an endurance, uh, you know, in cycling, that, uh, that euphoria, right? What a way to spend your life. What a great way to spend your life. And what, what did this guy do? A Spanish endurance athlete, athlete has become the first man to paddleboard across the Pacific Ocean, an epic 2,900-mile 20, solo vo uh, voyage from San, San Francisco to Hawaii, lasting 79 days. Wow. Now, a paddleboard, you say, oh, he's on a fucking surfboard. Not really. Look at the, look at the paddleboard he's in. He's got a fucking electric, he's got a, like, a, it's a boat. He's paddleboarding, yeah, but he's paddleboarding across a boat, right? That's that's a little different, I think. You know what I mean? Like it's not like he's on a, he's trying to hold on to a, you know, a fucking surfboard overnight while sharks are eating his feet. You know, it's it's a paddleboard. He's in there. He probably anchors the thing so he doesn't lose any ground. You know what I mean? It's no, there's no power in there. Maybe he's got a motor stuck in there. Who knows, man? Nonetheless, he's in there. Antonio de la Rosa. Antonio, Antonio de la Rosa, 50, arrived on the shore of Honolulu on Saturday morning and described the journey as one of the absolute loneliest and self-sufficient, using nothing but elbow grease to move the 24-foot stand-up paddleboard. Where's the fucking stand-up part? That's the late, I guess, I guess you stand up in the back of it. I don't, I don't have a good picture of it. The back of, oh, this is the back of the boat? I guess there's a spot up front where you stand up and paddle. I don't know, man. It's kind of like a turtle carrying your shell. So, uh, so he did it, 24, 24 foot stand up <laughs> paddle boat. Uh, he barely slept last night. He barely slept as strong winds threatened to stand him on the rocky coast between the islands of Molokha and Awawawawa in San Francisco report, right? So it's a, it's a great day, man. It's a fucking great day. Give the guy some credit, man. Give the guy, the guy some credit, right? The guy crosses the Pacific Ocean. So I think the, um, so we're going to look at some more uh, fake primaries, fake polls. Oh, let's take a look at the fake polls today. Is there anything else going on in fake, fake, uh, fake election polls? Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Yeah, they still have, Quinnipiac has Biden at 32 and Sanders 15. USA Today, Biden 32, Sanders 12. Economist, Biden 25, Sanders 14. Now, when I, when I cast my spell, it was, um, it was here. Where was it? It was in the, the Mammoth poll right here. Right? It was Biden 19, Sanders 20, Warren 20. And then they fudged it again, right? Emerson, oh, sorry, man. Emerson piled on 31 for, for Sanders, uh, the Hill. These are all fake polls. They got, they got, and they got, uh, they've locked, um, they've locked uh, Tulsi Gabbard below 2% average. She got 3% in Emerson, but they say, oh, that's, that, that doesn't count. <laughs> and here they've got her, they've got, um, they got Tulsi at 2%. I don't know if she qualifies. I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. We're going to find out later today, but I don't think so. I think it's pretty much a done deal where she has been uh, officially blocked out of the uh, 
the primary. But this is important. Again, like I said, if you're not in the primary, if you're not in the primary debate, you're not in the primary. Because once the primary rolls around, nobody knows who you are. How are you going to get votes if nobody knows who you are? And you can make YouTube channels and YouTube videos, but at some point, you have to get that big, that big mainstream media uh, attention. So again, the election fraud, the, the election rigging continues. It's not election fraud yet, but it's election rigging in the sense that they're, they're still have, they still have 10 shit sandwiches in there, nine shit sandwiches and Bernie Sanders trying to stiffen the message of income and wealth and equality in our country, get money out of politics, give, the, give America universal single-payer health care for all, cut you student debt, delete it, make college, college tuition at city and state universities free, take down big oil, break up the banks, do something for a change. Get busy on politics. Get busy in our politics. Marcus Conte reporting.